Uh, my name is Xiang Yilu. I'm a research scientist in uh, Data Finance Group, also from OSU. So uh, this talk will be focused on uh, how to build efficient cloud, HPC clouds with MRP2 and RDM Hadoop over SRV enabled infinite-band clusters. So these days, uh, cloud computing has been achieving uh, so much success uh, stories in both uh, uh, industry as, as, as well as academia. The main reason behind this is because cloud computing can maximize the effectiveness of the shared resources of your infrastructure. The major technology behind this is virtualization, okay? So uh, this has been adopted in many, many uh, industry environment, and IDC actually forecasts that it will be near 108 billion of uh, revenue in this year. Okay, if you look at the uh, driver uh, technologies of modern HPC cloud, we actually can see a lot of uh, in exciting technologies, for example, multi-core, many-core accelerator technologies, large memory nodes, uh, SSD, NVM, parallel file systems, object storage cluster, something like that. Uh, the most exciting thing for this community is that the RDMA-based uh, networking, such as InfiniBand and Rocky, as well as the uh, single root IO virtualization technologies. I will introduce what is uh, SRV. So SRV actually provide a, a lot of new opportunities to design HPC cloud with very little low overhead. The main idea of SRV is uh, you will have a, so let's say you have a, a, a physical device and then with SRV you're able to present the, this physical device as multiple virtual devices or virtual functions. And then each of these virtual functions can be directly mapped to the a dedicated virtual machine so that it, with, with PCI pass through uh, technology so that it will give you a very good, uh, uh, very good performance as well as a, a very good uh, isolation. So this technology work with uh, 10 gig, 40 gig, as well as infinite band. So many of us already know that the HP, uh, Infinity band and or other high performance interconnects such as 10 gig, 40 gig, 100 gig, or Rocky, those kind of things has been uh, widely used in HPC clusters. Now with SRV, the question is how to build efficient HPC clouds with SRV as well as Infinity band to deliver near native performance, even under the virtualization environment. So there are a lot of challenges of designing communication and IO middleware for HPC uh, cloud. So uh, we list uh, some of these here. For example, how to do efficient virtualization support, not only for virtual machines, as well as for containers. Because, because these days, many people are trying to use container technologies, for example, Docker or Singularity. And, uh, and also, because there's a lot of uh, efficient communication mechanisms you can use in HPC Cloud, for example, SRV or IVishman, inter-VM shared memory-based communication, or IPC shared memory if you use uh, containers, or CMA, just like Dropanda mentioned earlier. So then the question is how to efficiently coordinate this, uh, uh, this optimized communication channels on, on clouds. And then another thing is because of the virtualization, you have a, you have a different like a virtual machines or containers on your nodes. So that when you, when you do the communication you, or when you do your job uh, execution, you have to make your software aware of the locality. Because sometimes if you have co-located virtual machines, the communication or IO may be able to improved a lot if you compare with you use default schemes. And also the scalability issue, uh, blocking, non-blocking calls, those kind of things. And also one and another important thing is the new malware communication for nested virtualization. For example, uh, now these days in many, many uh, environments, people start using nested virtualization. What's mean by nested virtualization is that you have some software which is packaged by Docker instance or singularity instance because of the forced deployment requirement, right? You, you also want to remove all the dependencies by using Docker instances. But the infrastructure give you what? Give you virtual machine instance. So when you run your jobs, actually it's what? You run your Docker images or singularity, singularity images on top of virtual machines. This means you have a two layer virtualization. This will give you even worse performance compared with the native. So how to achieve that? That's another big challenge. Of course, another thing is like fault tolerance or uh, resiliency. In this case, you have to support virtual machine migration. But the problem is with SRV. Many of you may know that the major limitation of SRV is that you cannot do virtual machine migration. I will, show, I will give some story later. And also some other things like a co-design with resource management and scheduling systems uh, in cloud. Uh, because in cloud environments, many people may know that you are not using what? You are not using Tokyo or PBS. You, what you are using is OpenStack, okay? 
how to run your NPI jobs with OpenStack. And in some environment, maybe your people have SNRN or PBS oh, for sure. Then how to also run your jobs with SNRN with fertilization support. That's for, from HPC side. And then if you want to run big data workloads on uh, clouds, there's another set of important uh, challenges. For example, how to make your big data middleware uh, can take advantage of RDMA protocol, MVM, uh, different SSDs, part of our systems, and also different threat modeling uh, kind of things. Uh, the fault tolerance is like a building feature for uh, cloud, okay, uh, for, for big data. So now with virtualization, how you do that? And also uh, because you have different virtual machines, containers, how you uh, efficiently do data access and the placement, task scheduling. Another important thing is for cloud, you, you always want to achieve fairly good uh, application deployment perfor uh, performance. I will introduce some of the uh, techniques to, uh, to solve these things. So now this is the concrete uh, things we want to present in this talk. So what kind of approaches you can build HPC clouds? We want to share some experience we have done in our group. So there's multiple things. One is the how to design efficient MPI libraries with SRV and IV Shimon. And also what, how to, with SRV, how to support virtual machine migration in MRPG2. And then how to design efficient communication schemes with containers like Docker and Scanality. And then like I said, for NST virtualization, how, to, how you design MPI again. And then how to uh, run your MPI jobs on top of SNR. And then uh, what kind of big data libraries uh, or what kind of technology we can propose to enhance big data workloads. So in this, uh, in this talk, like Dr. mentioned there, the, for the big MRPG2 solder family, we are focused on MRPG2 Word, which is a high performance and scalable MPI for hypervisor as well as container-based HPC cloud. So this slide show that the, uh, the uh, challenges we have addressed so far so for example, what kind of uh, the best communication channels, locality of new malware communication, virtualization for container and the hypervisor for tolerance support, like migration and those QSL uh, studies. So uh, I think last year in, in this event, we also presented some initial results, like uh, how to run SRV with Eichmann. So here is, uh, the main idea is that because of, for SRV, right, you are not, is not able to uh, let you know what kind of locality information in MPI layer because it, it just gives you the uh, communication channel with a first function. Uh, but so then in, in HPC uh, world, we typically use shared memory communication or CMA-based communication for internal communication. Now with, with virtual machine, if you have a two virtual, with virtual machine environment, if you have a two virtual machine instance running on the same, same node, then how to achieve shared memory-based communication? That's, a, that's the bigger, bigger challenge here. So there's a one technique called uh, inter-VM shared memory, which means you can do shared memory-based communication across virtual machines, as long as they are co-located in one uh, physical node. So we take advantage of that, and then we design some locality detector, as well as communication coordinator in MPI runtime. So when you uh, run your MPI jobs on virtual machines, we are able to automatically and smartly select the best channel based on your uh, 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 MPI process location. And then just like I mentioned earlier, uh, because many, many uh, environments, they, they are using OpenStack. And then in OpenStack, uh, they currently now in the latest release, they support SRV now, but uh, they don't support Avishman. So we extend the OpenStack, especially the Nova component, to automatically to uh, sub do the SRV configuration, Avishman configuration for, for when you deploy your virtual machines to run MPI jobs. So now let's take a look at the performance. So this some application level performance, we run the Graph 500 or Spec MPI on top of uh, Chameleon Cloud. Here's 32 virtual machines. If, if you see the, perform, uh, the uh, overhead compared with the native uh, scheme, maximally you only see like up line 0.5% uh, overhead. In most cases around 5% or something like that. So this is very promising results for HPC Cloud. Okay, so now after you have SRV, and uh, you get a good performance. The question is, if you want to do migration, what happens? Okay, this is a screenshot, uh, uh, screenshot for when you do live migration with SRV device for virtual machines. Okay, so see, you see there is a, a SRV virtual function device, and then you run the command, say that I want to do the migration. And then immediately KVM will let you know that, okay, you can't do that because SRV device is there. Okay, so in the literature, there's multiple uh, studies. What people usually do is they ch either they change the driver or they change the hypervisor so that you can do the migration. 
this solution is okay for research, but the problem, if you really want to deploy this type of technology, there's a lot of problems. The one is, those kind of solution may only work with some specific version of drivers. It means it may bound to some specific uh, uh, vendor's solutions. Another thing is, it cannot support different hypervisors, right? Because you change the hypervisor kernel. Even for the same hypervisor, different version, it may be broken. So this will limit uh, a, a lot of the deploy scope for, for those kind of technologies. Now the challenge and, and the motivation for us is, can we propose some solution which don't require any change in your driver and your hypervisor for MPI application, okay? Seems impossible, but, but we actually can do that. What we did is, because the major problem of migrating a server device is that the, the driver, because they serve, for a server device, the driver, you don't need to change, so, so you, there's no support from there, and then the hypervisor also doesn't support that, then what you can do? The, one way is to do that is you can hot plug or unplug your SRV uh, device. But if you hot plug or unplug your SRV device, your communication may be broken, right? So in that case, the job will fail. That's, that's not something we want to uh, uh, get. So we propose something, something in, uh, in our MPI library as well as we propose some uh, virtual machine migration uh, framework, like a external uh, migration controller to, uh, to achieve this. The idea is, so when you want to do the migration, we will trigger the virtual machines through the IVCMN channel saying that uh, now I want to do migration. Please do something for me. Okay, and then internally the MPI library will detect this signal and then do a lot of things to hold on your, uh, to suspend your complicated channel, to take care of a lot of uh, fault tolerance related stuff. And then I tell the controller saying that, okay, now you can migrate. Now the controller will do the Un uh, hot unplug and, uh, and a lot of other stuff and make the virtual machine migration happens. And then with this, we are able to achieve this without changing any hypervisor, any driver. So we have a paper in IPDBS this year, so for some of you, if you, want to, uh, if you are going to attend that conference, where more details will be present there. So I want to share some numbers here. So as many of you know that when you do migration, the one of the major bottleneck is the, uh, is the actual memory copy time, so from one node to the other. So there, there are different schemes you can do uh, high performance, this type of memory copy. One is you can use TCP IP or IPOB or even RDMA based approach. So as we can see that this is the breakdown time. We see when you do virtual machine migration, the memory copy time is very uh, heavy. With, air, with RDMA, you are able to achieve very good performance. And then with our proposed uh, framework, because we, we use a lot of uh, parallelism inside. So as we can see that compared with if you do sequential migration, like you migrated the virtual machine one by one or something like that. We, our approach can, uh, can improve the performance like uh, 50%, okay? That's a very good uh, result when you do a lot of virtual machine migration. So here, like a 16 virtual machine migration, we're able to achieve very good performance. Okay, that's the migration performance. Now let's take a look at application performance. When you run application in, inside the virtual machine and this virtual machine get migrate to another node, Okay, we have proposed different designs. PE means uh, we do some changing in progress engine. MT means we, we have a migration thread which help you do the migration. So for this type of benchmark, this point to point, point benchmark, uh, we are not uh, see too much difference uh, for different skins. The one thing I want to highlight is that uh, for here, the, because the PE based solution, you don't need lock and lock overhead. So it's a little bit better than uh, MT, uh, Migrant thread based solution. The mig mig migrant thread basically you need to uh, lock in, you need to use a lock to make sure the communication uh, happens correctly. And then that's the major reason. That's why uh, uh, MT based solution uh, there's no too much uh, benefit. But there's also no uh, uh, the, the main reason is because the com computation is not uh, that much in this benchmark because this this point to point benchmark or cast benchmark. But now let's take a look at the applications. That's, the, that's something I want to highlight. Typically, when you in your application, you always have the computation as well, right? So the, we want to propose the uh, thread-based solution is because when you do the computation, we want to overlap with that. So that's why in your, when you run applications, the, uh, the migration thread-based solution is able to achieve near native performance, but the, the PE-based design still have some overhead. So this is some story we have done for the uh, virtual machine migration with SRV device. The next thing is uh, container. So these days, container technology 
uh, also uh, get, uh, get in momentum. The main reason is because the containers can provide fairly lightweight fertilizer technologies. For example, this like a Docker instance, you can run your applications on top of that directly. There's no extra layer of the uh, guest OS. So all the uh, container instance will share the uh, host kernel. That's the main uh, benefit from container technology. So we take some numbers here, like uh, if you don't change anything in MPI, what we found is if you run container when the, and, the, and the virtual machine and the native, these three schemes, you just compare, you see that, yes, container has fairly less overhead than virtual machine. But the problem is, right side, if you run container, different number of containers on the same host, you see that this, this graph 100, you see that the number becomes worse, okay? But the reason is why. So we have a paper in, uh, in uh, last year ICPP. What we found is we do a lot of providing. We found the main reason is because of, because of the isolation of lame space and the PID kind of things, the, the, the CMA channel is not being picked up inside the container environment, okay? So then we propose another level of designs for container environment, how to detect the locality information for containers. And then we are able to pick up PM, uh, CMA information as well as a lot of, lot of tunings in Docker environment or singularity environment. Let's take a look at the performance, this application level performance. See, we are able to really improve the performance compared with the, if you run default MPI inside the Docker environment, like 73% improvement. Now in, uh, in HPC community, uh, people start using Singularity. Maybe some of you know that. So this is uh, another type of uh, container technology. So we, run it, we also run our solution with Singularity. We are able to see like uh, around uh, 18 or 13% difference compared with the native for point to point, this is collective, and then this application. This application is MVP class D and the graph 500 on 32 nodes, uh, 512 processes. So all this number looks very exciting. Uh, now, like I said, if you run your application with container, but your uh, resource provider only give you virtual machines, then it's actually you can your performance will be even worse because of a two layer virtualization, right? You have a virtual machine layer, you have a container layer, and also the isolated physical resources, which will cause a lot of problems. For example, this, this slide show that how many complicated paths now you have in the nested virtualization environment. For example, this is the one socket, your container get deployed on this socket, and then you can do inter-socket, inter-complication, inter-container complication. And then across socket, you can do inter-socket complication. Inter-container, and then this is uh, this is some some, co some container in another socket, and then it's complicated with another node. There's a four different kind of passes in nested virtualized environment. So now, if we compare the default scheme, just so you don't change anything in MPI, and the third thing we have done in last work, which container aware design, which means one layer based solution, what we found is that, see the default and also inter VM inter container one layer design have similar performance, which means earlier work, it cannot, do, it cannot help for nested virtualization environment, right? And also if you compare it with the lady provided it's a big gap for nested virtualization. Okay, there are a lot of challenges here. So first, how to further reduce this performance overhead in this environment. Second thing is what kind of impact of different VM or container placement schemes on the uh, complication, okay? Because now you, you can deploy your virtual machine in, in any manner, you can de deploy your container in any manner as well. So another thing is, can we design an efficient, can we give an efficient design? So it can adapt to this kind of different schemes and deliver the best performance without changing anything in applications. So in this year, we, I'm, I'm going to present this work in the next uh, one, uh, two, two weeks. So we propose a uh, two layer two layer locality detection. One layer is for virtual machine, one layer is for the container. And then, well, not only that, we also propose some new malware design because now your container and the virtual machine is made on different sockets. We are trying to, use, we are trying to get the new information across layers and optimize the performance. Let's take a look at some numbers. So we compare with the uh, default design running on less environment, one layer approach, two layer approach, and the native without CMA and with CMA. So we are able to see that com compared to the one layer design earlier we proposed, we are able to achieve up to 184% improvement for latency and bandwidth. 
that's a big improvement. And uh, for this, that's for inter circuit. For inter circuit, we can also achieve around 42 and 25 percent improvement for latency in the bandwidth. And then for applications, we also see uh, around 16 kind of uh, performance benefit uh, on the, uh, with our designs. Now the next story is if you run these things on top of HPC clusters, there you have SNRN, right? Now what do you can do? So because SNR currently uh, out of box SNR solution, you, they, they're not aware for your machines or anything about uh, that, right? So you have to integrate, you have to do something to extend the SNR's functionality so that they are aware of virtual machine deployment, aware of the SRV and efficient devices kind of things. So we have proposed some solution like uh, how to extend the SNR through Spunk plugin, which uh, is standard way to extend SNR functionality. We propose something uh, when you when you submit the jobs, we will load some VM configura configurations, and then when you run your jobs, we are we are trying to deploy the virtual machines for you in the, in the, uh, in the on the fly, and then uh, we are we are do some uh, assign the SRV device, efficient device, and also make sure that the, the isolation is guaranteed uh, uh, among different virtual machine deployments, and then after that we run jobs on top of the dynamic allocated virtual machines. Okay, this is one thing. The second thing is because sometimes in the uh, infrastructure you may have the open stack as well. So then some people may ask whether we can offload these tasks to open stack. And then we propose another scheme, which means SNR combined with open stack. So which means when you run your jobs, the, uh, the virtual machine or allocation kind of tasks, we can actually offload it to the open stack daemon. OpenStack will do that for you. And then once the virtual machine gets allocated, we will run the uh, MPI jobs on top of that. So we have uh, compared, we have uh, run some experiments on, the, on, uh, on top of SNR uh, V extension, virtual machine extension. So we have run different cases. For example, you can ex exclusively get an allocation, but you, you run your sequential jobs. Or you can get an allocated host, but shared by multiple jobs. Or you can exclusive, get an exclusive allocation, but still you run multiple jobs concurrently. So with this, we show that we are able to guarantee that the resource, resource being allocated by SNR is isolated in your virtual machine. And as well, we give very good performance compared with the native. For example, there's only 4% overhead for, uh, for this type of workloads, similarly for other types of workloads. Now let's go to another uh, story, uh, which is uh, big data, how to run big data workloads on top of cloud efficiently. So like uh, in Dotapan's first talk, we, we have a, another project called HiBD. We, we, there we have a lot of advanced designs for Apache Spark, Hadoop, Hortonworks, Cloud Area, and uh, HBase, Memory HD, Hadoop One, OHB, a, a, lot of, a lot of them. So the main idea of that is, is how you can achieve best performance on top of RDMA-enabled interconnects. Uh, we did a lot of designs inside these this, this packages. Okay, now the challenges of running big data workloads on top of cloud, for example, Apache Hadoop, is that how about the performance of SRV is one thing. Second thing is how to achieve a locality of very uh, kind of complication, or, as well as I.O., because in, in big data workloads, a lot of I.O. requirements. How we can design the virtualization aware policies inside the Hadoop uh, framework so that you can efficiently take advantage of these technologies. Okay, and also uh, how, the, how, whether this design will change your fault tolerance or performance on virtualization environment. We have to do a lot of studies and then see what, what kind of benefit we can get. Okay, so the main idea is how can we design high performance Hadoop library or other big data library on top of cloud based systems. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, Hadoop, what we did. So this is the Hadoop architecture. You have the HDFS layer, which gives you the storage service. And then you have the Hadoop Common uh, component, which gives you a lot of uh, uh, utilities like RPC, uh, the topology information, all kind of things. And then on top of HDFS, there's a resource manager called Young, which actually is used to allocate uh, Young containers and run tasks, scheduling your applications, kind of things. And then on top of that, you can run MapReduce framework, you can run HBase, you can run Spark, you can run whatever. And then this application on top of that. What we did is we proposed virtualization aware modulars in all these four main Hadoop components. For example, for HDFS, we propose the virtualization aware block management 
to improve fault tolerance. The idea behind this is because when you have virtual machines, right, it may co-locate in the same node. And then if you don't aware of the topology un underneath, then you, in HDF3, you probably schedule your blocks on, the, on two virtual machines with co-locating the same host. Then if that host done, all your data lost, right? So you have to, you have to uh, place your block in a smart way that you, once the physical node done, you still have some copies. That's the HDFS component. And then for Yarn component, definitely you have to make sure when, you are, when you're scheduling allocation, your containers, you are able to aware of where is the virtual machines, those kind of things. And then for MapReduce, similarly, you also need to schedule your task efficiently with aware of virtual machine. And then Hadoop, com Hadoop common, because the, there's a topology detection modular, we want to automatically detect your underneath, uh, uh, under, uh, under, underlying uh, topology information, and then expose this to the MapReduce task HDFS so that uh, it, the locality aware <coughs> communication IO can be achieved. So let's see some numbers. So we, we, we run some Cloudburst, which is bioinformatical applications, and the self-join these uh, database applications we run on top of cloud. What we see that compared with default schemes, we are able to reduce the time by almost half for uh, self-join. For the Cloudburst bioinformatical applications, we can uh, reduce 30%. Okay, so that's for Hadoop. And another thing is in the cloud, people sometimes using another storage called OpenStack Swift. That's object storage, distributed object storage. This is the architecture of that. So you have a different object servers. In, the, in each server, you have a different disk. You have a lot of disk. And then you have a proxy server, which will take care of, of all the requests. Okay, And then in proxy server, it will distribute these requests to different object, story, uh, object server. And then you have RIN, which is a metadata server. And then uh, so here, what we see that there are two big challenges and the or, or bottlenecks. So first thing is all of this communication actually go through the sockets, which is not high efficient if you have the infinite band uh, kind of networks. Another thing is the proxy server becomes a bigger bottleneck because all the requests will go to proxy server first. Okay, then we, what we proposed when we, uh, when we are trying to use OpenStack Swift to build HPC Cloud is first, we want to improve the communication through RDMA protocol. So we designed some RDMA uh, uh, library because OpenStack is, uh, Swift is written with Python. Uh, we, we, design, we, we designed it with C uh, language and then how to interact with Python. Uh, that's take a lot of time. Another thing is we uh, redesigned the architecture of OpenStack, OpenStack Swift. We proposed two different ways. One is the, uh, you don't have to change any applications uh, in the client side, which means your default uh, uh, approach can uh, cl cl uh, default Python library for client can run, and then we also uh, change another way is that we remove the bottleneck of proxy server so that your client can directly talk with the uh, object server so that the the, the bottleneck of uh, proxy server is removed through this design. So we have paper in CC Grid this year. We are, we, are, we are present there also. So let's take a look at the numbers. So with our design, like design one, design two, we are able to achieve the performance very good compared with the default one, okay? And also, if we compare the best case, best case this side uh, with the default skin, we are able to achieve like 66% uh, uh, reduction in gate latency. Okay, so all, these are all designs in the runtime library. Now the question is, if you have the cloud, okay? If I cloud, you, you, we want to deploy these solutions easily. What we did is we, we encapsulate all these solutions in inside images, and we develop some appliances. For example, we, be, we develop some MPI bare metal compl uh, appliance, complex appliance with OpenStack heat, or virtual machine appliance with heat also, so that when you deploy these solutions, it's just one click. Okay, one click, as long as you have OpenStack you can easily deploy all these solutions. Okay, with this, let me, let me conclude. So in this talk, first thing I want to bring here is the MRVH2 world design can efficiently take advantage of SRV uh, resources as well as Irishman to give you best performance, not, no matter standalone run or open stack, with OpenStack, with Stern, with Stern Plus, OpenStack, anything. This is like a whole ecosystem we support. And then we support the virtual machine migration with SRV device. You don't have to change your driver, you don't have to change your hypervisor, whatever. You can run with our library. Second thing, we support both virtual machine container as well as the nested virtual machine music container inside the virtual machine. Very little overhead, very promising results. And we also see we are much better than Amazon EC2 if you run MPI jobs there. 
Okay, all these things have been, uh, most of these things have been released in under MFG2 virtual li uh, library. For the big data side, we also already have Hadoop. We also keep, in, keep improving uh, on, the, on the cloud uh, infrastructure. So for the future uh, directions, we will support a uh, lot of things. Like uh, first, we make, a, make, some, make the release for some of this. And then we also try to enhance RDMA Spark, memory cache D kind of things. Okay. I will give another talk about NV, NV uh, run aware on the communication big, for big data. So tomorrow, that's tomorrow. Let me thanks uh, all the uh, team members. Thanks a lot. Any questions? I have one question on your, <clears throat> uh, you know, virtual migration uh, of the MPI apps. So you do that all at the MPI level. Then you basically like pause all the connections and then reestablish them after the migration. Yeah, we do in two in two places. One is the MPI runtime. Uh -huh. Yes. The other one we have some external controllers, which okay. kind of because I need to get the users' requests and then transfer this information into the virtual okay. machines, and the MPI will be aware of that. Otherwise, if you only change MPI runtime. You cannot do that. OK. Yeah. And then the, the second question I have is, is, is all that code open source, or is it closed source? <laughs> so far, it's, it's binary. OK. So, yeah. Right. yeah. Just want to know. Thanks. Uh, how big were those uh, virtual machines you're migrating? OK, that's a good question. Actually, uh, I, I, sorry, the, the, maybe in the slides I don't show. The number we showed the breakdown is 512 megabytes. Okay. 512 megabytes. So we, we have tested with 512, 1 gig, 2 gig, 4 gig. Yes, of course, if you have more memory, the, the, the migration time will be a little bit increased, right? But because we take advantage of RDMA technologies for that, that's much better than if you use TCP IP or IPOB. And, and when you do these migrations, do you, um, you, you know, you do experience some pause during the migration time, which I think you were talking about the delay, you know? Yes. Um, uh, but do you do it uh, while, I mean, is one part of the, can you do migration of one part of the cluster and it continues to run during this period and, you know, just because you have a potential uh, movement of one part of the cluster, the rest can still run? Or these are like all to all kind of communication, so basically when one part is out, the whole thing stops. Okay, that's a good question also. So with our design, we don't, uh, stop your computation at all. The only thing is for your MPI if you, because we have to hot unplug SR device, right? So for that case, you have to stop or suspend your MPI traffic, which is taken care of by our MPI library. But if your application still runs some computation tasks, computation tasks, okay, it's still, it's still running because we are using live migration underneath, okay? Only there's very small downtime for your computation. You know, live migrate is only like a microseconds level downtime, right? Only the dirty page you get migrate. That's all. But the complication, MPI complication traffic, yes, definitely you have to suspend. Okay, and yeah. were you in some of those kind of things? Sometimes switches are helping you do some, you know, uh, uh, collective operations, these kind of things. Mm -hmm. You might have to reprogram those too, right? During the kind I, of uh, migrations and stuff like that. Uh, let me think. You are saying the switch based. Well, you may have collective tree and some partial aggregation of results and switches and things. Yes, uh, but that will be like independent with our design, right? We can take advantage of those technologies. But if your topology changes, where your where your collective yeah, that, that's, tree is. Yeah, we need. We things. have to. Re that, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, still have some. Still have ongoing work. After you migrate, you have to redetect everything. That's something we we are not right. done yet. That's okay. a good question. Thanks. Right. Uh -huh. And with your Swift work, um, uh -huh. the, uh, you know, you showed a change design where, I guess the uh, the, the object servers talk directly to the client. Yes. Right. Yes. But but that would that would not be that one is not a transparent design, right? You said you were really had two designs. Yeah, we have said? two designs. The first one is we don't bypass pass proxy server with okay. transparent design. But if you the second design is for performance. Right, right. Yeah, I yeah. understand if, you could have much more performance yes, that yes, way. Yes, yes, yes. But in, is, is there also some optimized design which doesn't change the, the client? Yes, yes. That's what I'm saying, right? RDMA design is there. OK. Even you use proxy server, mm. we also support RDMA communication <laughs> rather than socket-based communication. So does design still available? OK. OK. Yeah. At least your data movement time will get reduced. OK. Yeah. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, two quick questions. Uh, yes. <coughs> uh, excuse me. Um, I instead of uh, using SRIOE, um, uh, what I have uh, based on my studies, uh, it's much faster to use uh, DPDK with IVSH MEM. Mm -hmm. Have you tried that one? Yeah, I, I said right. We are using IVSH MEM also. Yes, but with yeah, SRIOE with user space DPDK, it's much uh, faster. No, we didn't try DPDK, sorry. And the mm -hmm. other one is uh, based on this conference. Um, there is also a V port from InfiniBand. I think that'll be better than, S SROV is not one of my favorites. Okay. I find it there are alternates no, no, to no. that. I, actually, I talked with Liran yesterday. Liran, please correct me if I'm wrong. The V port design is the way they are going to implement the SROV. Okay, that's totally two different technology. I also get confused, but I talked with him, so that he, he cl clarified for me. Yeah. So this it will be complementary. How important was uh, using IV Shmem for doing your live migration? And okay. What, yeah. did, and did you guys have to pick up the support for that? Because I looked into that a couple of years ago, and it wasn't being supported. Yeah, that's another good question. So we choose IV Shmem just for transfer the signal. So you have multiple ways to transfer signal from controller to inside the NPI library, right? So we just choose Ivishman as the single channel. You actually can use anything else, as long as you are able to transfer your single into the virtual machines. We just choose Ivishman. But actually, you can choose anything else. For example, the, the, the naive approach is you write something in parallel fasten, and this parallel fasten get, get mounted into the virtual machines, right? Then you are able to detect something through file system. That's also possible. Or you can use like a even PMI infrastructure you do you send a message to there and then do that. So are you using it or maintaining it or both? We use it. We also maintain it. Oh, we no, no, we don't maintain Avishman, but we maintain our part, which use my Avishman. Yeah. Thank okay. You. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm.